Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Cobb of Z Health Performance. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to structure your training if you have a single-sided pain presentation. Uh, this is gonna have some brain science in it, so stay tuned as we get through the rest of the episode. If you're new to Z Health, uh, just know that we are an education company. For the last 20 years, we've focused on working with world-class doctors, therapists, coaches, and trainers around the world who use a brain-based approach to improve movement, pain, and performance. That's what we do. Uh, we also have had a mission to help a million people get out of pain uh, and improve their lives utilizing brain-based training. And for that, we create all this free content. So we have over 500 videos um, available for you. We have an online course, free ebooks. So make sure to check that out to see if it can help you. All right, so today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about something that we see quite regularly that as a brain-based practitioner is super interesting and also important to address. Often we have people come in and they say, look, I'm having pain. And then you ask them where? They say, well, it's my right shoulder. I have elbow tendonitis or tennis elbow on the right side as well. My right knee hurts and I have plantar fasciitis on the right. As a human being, we are considered to be a contralateral biped in motion, which means my left leg and my right arm work together. So usually when we see biomechanical, if you want to call it that, issues, we will often see left side lower body issues and right side upper body issues. But probably at least 40 to 50% of the people that we see violate that rule. They will complain about single-sided pain issues or single-sided injuries. If that's you, one of the things that we have talked about in prior blogs is unilateral versus bilateral training because of how the brain works. It's a pretty simple idea. The right side of your brain controls the left side of your body in voluntary movement, all right? So if I ask you to do a, a row, a curl, whatever, with your left side, the driver for that is gonna be the right side of your brain. But very importantly, another job of the right side of the brain is that as you're creating voluntary movement on the left, it should be stabilizing the right side of the body in order to allow you to create force. Additionally, what's happening on the right side is it's sending signals down to your brainstem to control muscle tone so that your joints are stable and also as a part of what's called an anti-nociceptive system, which is basically a pain inhibition system. So what we often see in people who, let's say, are having a lot of right-sided pain, uh, if we test them, they have poor coordination on the left side of the body uh, and, or poor strength on the left side of the body. And as a result of that, they are lacking activation in the right side of the brain and subsequently the right brainstem isn't getting stimulation. So now all of a sudden the brainstem that's supposed to inhibit pain on the right side is not doing its job uh, and we start to see these types of presentations. Now the reason I'm talking all that through with you is that often we see these people, whether it's a patient, an athlete, whatever, we say what we want to start off with is six weeks of unilateral training. And we, they ask what that means. We're gonna say, we're gonna train the left side of your body for the next six weeks. The number one thing we hear is, I, I won't do that, I can't do that, I'll wind up asymmetric. So I always tell them, look, you're already asymmetric. Uh, none of us are per perfectly symmetric. Uh, but right now, you have a neurological asymmetry, if you wanna call it that, uh, that may be contributing to your pain. And understand I'm oversimplifying all this for the sake of a YouTube video. <laughs> but having said that, um, a lot of people just simply refuse. They're like, no, I, there's no way that I can do that. And if that's you, if that sounds like a very weird idea that you would just focus on training one side of your body in order to help pain on the other side of your body for six weeks, it simply then comes down to volume. So if you are, let's say this person with all right-sided pain, know that you're going to need to create a lot of left-sided activity. So if you are still gonna be in the gym, you're still gonna be doing exercise, um, of some type, what we would then recommend is a 70-30 volume split, which means that if I'm gonna do uh, a lot of work and I'm, I'm gonna refuse to not do bilateral work, for three reps on the right side, you need to do seven reps on the left side. It's a very simple idea. Now, there's nothing magical about the 70-30 rule, it's just having worked with thousands of people, uh, that seems like something that they will actually do, as opposed to me saying, let's do six and four, because at that point, we're now getting almost equal amounts of load. 80-20 uh, actually, I think, works better for many people. But again, just doing two reps versus eight makes people freak out. So I just wanted to make sure that you had an idea that if you fit into this category of, I've injured the right side of my body a bunch, I have pain on the right side of my body, number one takeaway is, you may need to spend a lot of time doing left-sided training. Number two, you don't have to only train the left side of your body forever, 
Remember I said in the beginning, we normally do a six week uh, workup, but if that also feels extremely strange to you, just keep in mind the 70-30 volume split, you may find that it works wonders. So what I want you to do is if this is you, right side, you're gonna train 70-30, focus on the left. If you have left side only pain, you're gonna do a 70-30, the reverse, focusing on the right side. Try this. Before your training session, check your ranges of motion, check your pain levels, warm up, do a 70-30 training session, and then retest. Notice that if, if you feel significantly different than you would after one of your more standard training sessions, um, if that is the case, then this is probably something you need to stick to. As I said, for the next four to six weeks, it may make a tremendous difference ultimately in your ability to rehabilitate uh, the issues that you're experiencing. So give this a shot and let us know what you think. Thanks.